Hello everyone, time for another update. This one is going to be devoted almost entirely to the 1745 Jacobite Rebellion. Um, I haven't touched this project in probably nearly two years and uh, sort of uh, gave up on it for a while for a number of reasons. Um, one, or, one was uh, being slightly daunted by the prospect of uh, painting so much tartan um, but the main one was that I was trying to assemble armies uh, completely composed of uh, figures from Krantara and unfortunately um, around that time Graham at Krantara decided to retire um, perfectly reasonable decision for him to make and one that I uh, um, you know totally sympathize with having retired a long time ago myself um, but uh, he chose to pass the range on to Caliber books and I've never been entirely happy with my uh, dealings with Caliber books they're perfectly fine for obtaining books and war games rules and that kind of thing from but um, in terms of the figure ranges they carry um, I've always found them a little bit tardy um, they would disagree with me in that respect um, and I can confirm that from conversations I had with them about two years ago but anyway um, I sort of panicked and decided to put place a very large order with them in order to uh, you know have have a good stock of figures to be working on so that I didn't have to worry about you know the delivery times or anything like that and it was several hundred pounds worth of figures and uh, placed it it must have been around November of oh gosh it's going back a bit now 2021 I'm guessing um, and I didn't expect to receive the order um, swiftly due to my previous experiences with them ordering figures and um, sure enough I got a you know an acknowledgement of my order and that was it for several months and um, you know so it was up to my expectations and it was pre Christmas and it was a lot of figures so didn't think of anything was particularly out of the, you know out of the ordinary and then um, I think it was in in sort of January I got in touch with them and said how are you getting on with the order and they said oh we sent it ages ago um, and uh, you know so the, basically they said um, I said I hadn't received it and they said reorder it and we'll send you a you know, replacement but I wasn't happy with that because um, a you know they hadn't sent me an, a, uh, an email notifying me that the order had been dispatched and B they didn't have any record of my order having you know asking me to reorder it without without uh, just being able to say oh yeah we've you know we've got details of it here we'll send you it all again so um, I asked for my money back and they very uh, graciously returned my money um, but that left me really frustrated because uh, you know I do having having set myself the aim of building up two armies from you know the an identical you know the same range um, I was then compelled to look at other figure ranges and someone I'd, I'd, someone on my um, YouTube channel had suggested Flags of War um, I had bought some figures from them to see how they looked and they are splendid figures, really nice figures but they they do have a different aesthetic to these Krantara figures and I do get a bit obsessed not just about figure scales you know and mismatching interpretations of what 28 millimeter actually means um, but I, I, I do find the, the look and uh, of the, the models, the aesthetics of them, 
you know can can jar with me as well so i can i can spot you know uh, different ranges if they if they're put together in in the same units and uh, that kind of jars with me as well so i sort of kind of gave up on the project for a while thought oh, i'll get back to it and um buy a lot of flags of war figures um but the flags of war figures i had remained unpainted as did these figures here which are the uh, last remaining jacobites that i had you know pre-purchased from Krantara. but then recently i was reinvigorated to get back into the jacobite rebellion partly because there's been some really good uh content on youtube regarding wargaming the Krantara and the uh Jacobite Rebellion. Um, in particular, two channels I mentioned. One is Duke Windsor, um, who is, uh, is either American. I think he's. I think he's American. I'm not entirely sure. He might be Canadian. Apologies for not checking beforehand. But he's he started a Jacobite Rebellion project only a couple of months ago. But he's got on famously with it, and he's, you know got lots of figures already painted and really good tabletop presentation of scenery and you know model buildings and all his units that he's got painted up already and he's working on some rules home, homemade rules at the moment so i recommend you go into his channel duke windsor that's w-i-n-s-c-r um, not the windsor castle in england spelling and the other one is the battle of preston pans preston pans um which is the museum at the Battle of Preston Pans site, which have been running for over a year now, have been running a, a what if campaign um, where they get uh, Facebook input into the decisions to be made during the campaign and they're you know, sort of replaying battles that take place in this fictitious campaign. And that's been really well uh, you know, presented and portrayed and that's sort of got me interested in it again. So, and also um, recently I've had to, had a lot of home confinement, um, so I needed something to do with my time. So I thought I'd plunge back into, uh, you know, my absorption with the Jacobite Rebellion. So here, here are the really remaining uh, Highlanders that I hadn't got painted up before from Krantara. Um, what I've done, or what I was doing, was basically there wasn't a uniform tartan at this time of uh, in history for the clans so i've i've tended to sort of paint a sort of background color um i'm saying that with two the two figures at the back there uh, are different from the five bases at the front um but essentially the five bases at the front you'll notice have all got the same background color um, but then I've painted different colorations of tartan over that background. So there is a kind of, you know, bonding color in the background to them there. So those five bases at the, the front represent one clan. And then the two at the back are, are made up to um, supplement some previous painted f figures that I've got. So the green, I had one figure surplus that I painted in green uh, and then I had another three figures from my unpainted figures so I made that up into a base of four and that's gonna uh, be a six base green clan as it were and then the one on the left there at the back that you can see now is a sort of orangey kind of color and that will go towards four other bases that I've already got painted up in that colour. So that's another clan compete at the back there. And uh, the flags that you can't see very well because I can't include them in the uh, frame are, are from Flags of War. And uh, that's just about everything I've got to say on those ones. So I'll go on to some other figures that I've got painted for the Jacobite Ray. Okay, so this chap is another Krantara figure that I had left over, um, representing Lord George Murray. 
Um, it, honestly, he really could be uh, any sort of Jacobite leader. In fact, the, um, the Battle of Preston Pans, I noticed on their uh, videos, they've been using this model to represent another Jacobite leader. Can't remember which one, but um, yeah, nice figure. Quite pleased with the way the tartan on him turned out. And uh, not much else to say on him. So, uh, one last group of figures um, that I've got painted to show you next. Okay, this is another command base. Uh, another two figures from Krantara. Um, obviously, Charles Edward Stuart or Bonnie Prince Charlie. And. Uh, Again, really nice figure, but not much else to say on him. And that is uh, all I had still to do from my Krantara stockpile, which uh, I've decided, you know, after a business a couple of years ago with Calibre Books, I'm not going to proceed with. Uh, Krantara any longer, which is a shame because they're such a nice range. Um, all I've got left now from their range is uh, a couple of government personalities, Duke of Cumberland and Henry Hawley to paint. And then I'll move on to, uh, I made I made a few tentative purchases from Flags of War at that time, so I'll paint those up and then uh, um, order from I don't know whether I'll stick entirely to Flags of War, having broken the uh, the run of Crown Tower now, I might experiment with some other ranges out there. Um, Duke Windsor's using uh, Old Glory figures. Um, I don't think I'll go down that road because I'm not terribly keen on the uh, poses more than the sculpt sculpts with Old Glory. Um, well, they are a very useful range for you know, bulking your armies out relatively cheaply, you know, with a lot of variation in them. Um, but they, have, they, to my eye, they have some strange uh, poses. So that goes back to that thing about trying to get a, a sort of common aesthetic in your, in your armies. Um, and Old Glory really stand out. Um, but there are other ranges like um, uh, front rank now sold through Gripping Beast. I might try again. They have a very distinctive look. Very nice figures, but a very distinctive look. Um, and I don't see really why there's no need to stray beyond Flags of War because they have got such a a good range and the opportunity to extend into the War of Austrian Succession as well, which was contemporary with. Uh, the 1745 rebellion um, but anyway that's not the end of what I've got done for the project I've got some a, a little bit of scenery and some books to show you next next up we have a model Scottish black house which I purchased from any scale models again probably a couple of years ago now and I hadn't got it painted up so I thought I would get it out and uh, it was highly suitable for the uh, Jacobite Rebellion. And uh, so any scale models, really, really recommend any scale models. Great, great company. Um, but their, their black house is just the, the house itself, two separate parts, parts of roof, which is uh, separate, but um, I chose to glue it onto the, uh, the main building. Um, but I've put it on, I have I had a load of um, spare uh, MDF bases, uh, templates, I suppose you could call them. Um, for some reason, um, it was Wardold Games. I bought bought some termite hills from their sci-fi Gates of Antares 
range but they're perfectly suitable for proper termite hills so I bought them to use in the game of Congo um, and they came complete with bases which I think were from Sarissa but f far more than you needed uh, there were three bases for every collection of termite mounds so I've got loads of these uh, bases left over um, if I just zoom down a little bit you might be able to see but they had um, recesses in them to hold the termite hills so some of them I've covered up and some of them I've left open but just uh, put a little bit of uh, um, you know filling around the edges and so on and, and turn them into sort of recesses in the in the in the ground a bit like you get on Dartmoor or moors in general filled them with a sort of water effect um, and then covered it in uh, basing material from Geek Gaming and also another company that I can highly recommend uh, Tajima One Miniatures um, so if I zoom in there's lots of uh, tufts and flowers and so on moorland you know flowers and reeds uh, which I think are really fantastic I'm trying to get zoomed in a little bit, bit better on those but uh, it goes out of focus having gone so far into yeah it goes out of focus about there but uh, yeah Tajima one miniatures um, they're on holiday at the moment but uh, they're back in mid-January uh, that's their details there um, they started off as a um, commission painters for miniatures but they decided to sort of branch out and make lots of uh, diorama pieces and tufts and so on that you can use for a lot for, you know a whole variety of landscapes I've bought the desert stuff in the past and uh, I didn't point out but on the those Jacobite figures you saw earlier the heather tufts were from Tajima not the grass tufts but the heather tufts were from Tajima so really worth looking at their website because that you know they, they do a whole range of uh, various tufts I mean some of the bigger ones are too big for you know sort of small bases 25 mil rounds or something like that but uh, you can put them on larger command stands or like this put them on to uh, little scenic effects and so on and also um, any scale models um, they're really nice pleasant company to deal with um, but they always seem to throw into the order um, little freebies that uh, you know they consider to be rejects not up to their um, standard to put on sale but uh, you know perfectly usable so they gave me this as well as a freebie when I made the order quite a long time ago um, I bought some 20 mil stuff for the use in the Falklands War from them as well. Um, but this is a, an artillery screen, sort of Gabion wicker screen. Um, I think they're ba yeah they are based up in Scotland because they left. When I said I, I wanted the Black House for the Jacobite Rebellion, they gave me this very scornfully saying that the government troops could hide behind it. Um, but very nice nice little piece I can't see anything wrong with it I'm not sure why they rejected it um, and it will do very nicely so um, next up book purchases okay so uh, book purchases mainly but not entirely related to the Jacobite rebellion uh, so I got this supplement to the black powder rules quite an old supplement now but uh, it's basically uh, adjustments for the rules suitable for the 18th century 
but it does include the Jacobite Rebellion in there, or the Jacobite Rebellions, which they put under the title of the Wars of the English Succession. Uh, so as you can see there, there's quite a large area, part of the book, dedicated to the uh, Wars uh, of the English Succession. So they cover that covers the period of 1690 to 1796, but um, you know the, the 1745 rebellion was the most uh, uh, dominant kind of aspect of that that whole conflict. Um, yeah, and also I've got them direct from Warlord Games, so when you do that, you get a freebie. Uh, figure which in the case of uh, the last argument of kings is uh, Highlander so uh, suitable for Jacobite rebellions but in fact um, warlords Highlanders are principally kind of uh, set in an earlier period they're, they're, they're more um, they seem to me anyway to be more aimed at uh, the English Civil War and Montrose's army and so on but uh, the style of dress didn't change that much so it'll be useful for that for the 1745 that is um, and then as it's sort of um, drawing me into interest in 18th century conflicts in general so while I was on the warlord site I bought the supplement to black powder for the American War of uh, Independence or the American Revolutionary War um, I have got a lot of unpainted figures for this particular conflict so uh, as I say it kind of it, uh, my taste for the 18th century has been um, you know reawakened as well doing these Jacobite figures so you never know you might get around to painting those up in the in the new year sometimes don't know and again you get a freebie figure I think he's a an American officer can't remember but there's that um, and I purchased a couple of uh, books from naval and military press related to the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. So there's the sieges of the 45 siege warfare during the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745 to 76. So as the uh, blurb on the back of the book points out, there were actually more sieges during the 1745 rebellion than there were battles. Um, So that struck me as a, um, you know, an interesting uh, possibility for future games, a siege type battle. Um, the, the, probably the most uh, dramatic one, dramatic siege, was of the Ruthven Barracks, which uh, you can find lots of uh, videos on Terry Quick's channel. Of that particular site, uh, it withheld one siege, but then surrendered to the Jacobites after a second siege, and was the site of the sort of uh, disbanding of the Jacobite army in 1746 after Culloden as well. Uh, but Terry Quick often has holidays in Scotland; has got lots of footage on his channel. If you want to go to that of uh, walking around with the barracks, I think that's how you pronounce it. But yeah, I thought that would be an interesting book to get. And then I also bought um, a book on the sort of uh, life and career of Henry Hawley, who was known as King George's Hangman. And that just because, as I say, one of the last figures from Krantara that I've got to paint up is a, a model representing Henry Hawley. Although it looks to me, I won't go into too much detail, but it looks to me more like the Krantara figure is based on a, a painting of Henry Hawley that was made around 1751 by Moria. doesn't look anything like this figure, 
but the Flags of War model of Henry Hawley does look like this figure. Um, so I may end up getting a a model of Henry Hawley from Flags of War and use the other figure more as a sort of generic personality figure. Um, yeah, that should be an interesting read. Um, uh, yeah, I won't say too much about it as well, but I wanted to make a video response to uh, David at uh, Zen Miniature Paintings YouTube channel about uh, the acquisition of books and the use of libraries instead and that kind of thing, which I thought was a very interesting video. Um, but it's going to take me a while to um, respond to that. So it needs a lot of... Uh, um, movement of various bits of clutter and things before I can do it and it's quite a it's quite a task but I I wanted to respond to that video but more of that in the future yeah um, on this 18th century as well I bought picked up this from Naval and Military Press Christopher Duffy's Prussia's Glory Rossbach and Luton Luton Leuton um, Again, I've got lots, not lots, but I've got a few unpainted figures from um, front rank Prussian grenadiers and things, which, uh, you know, I find the 18th century really appealing, but at the same time quite daunting because uh, I like to war game in sort of, you know, sort of with walls like black powder um, units rather than single basing, multiple basing and so on. And it does... They, you know, inevitably it always turns into very long term projects um, and the 18th century is a period where you do need, if you're going to do that, you do need large armies um, and all I've got at the moment for the Seven Years War anyway is uh, about 24 unpainted figures so um, it's one of those, you know, very long term things but I do find it an interesting period, just not one I have much time to dedicate to. Uh, the only other thing that I've acquired recently in the way of books is this that a friend spotted in a charity shop, thought I might be interested in it. Um, and yeah, I am. It's going to be a useful addition to my library, but not, not on a subject related to anything I'm doing at the moment. World War II Photo Intelligence. Um, so there's lots of pictures about the technology of photography and the planes and all that kind of thing. Right, in all theatres in World War II, not just Europe. Um, but I thought that would make an interesting read at some stage. And I'm very grateful to him for finding it for me. And that is the end of that update. Thank you very much for watching. Um, more to come on the Jacobite Rebellion as I get more figures painted up and lots of other things going on as well at the moment um, in the background that I should have uh, to show you in the not too distant future. See you on the next video. Bye for now.